Welcome to another installment of the Riot.js and Redux video series. If you haven't been following along, it will probably be much easier to start at the beginning since each video builds on where the previous video left off. And remember, to get up to speed on Redux itself, you really can't beat the Egghead IO videos by Redux's creator, Dan Abramov. So in our last video, we set up Riot and Redux to use the Thunk middleware so that we can make async calls. And we use that to call our JSON server with a get to grab a couple of records and display those on the page. So we're going to build on that example. And now we're going to start posting to that same API. And the great thing about JSON server is that it allows that and it'll actually take the updates and apply them to our db.json file so that we can use this like a real API, but everything is file based. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open a new terminal window and in my new window, we're just going to take a look at a quick post using curl. So I'm going to post to localhost 3000 slash tasks with the content type set to application slash JSON and the data of curl sample. We're going to press enter there and we'll get a response curl sample and it has an ID of two. So if I go back into my editor and take a look at db.json, we'll see that it's been updated with that data. So I'm going to clear that out. And let's add some code so that we can post from our actual application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new tag and this tag is going to hold the form that's going to add a new task. So we'll add a new file and I'm going to call that task form tag. And in that file, I'll go ahead and give it its root tags and we're going to need some form tags. And this form is going to have an on submit handler that's going to point to a function called handle submit, which we'll create in a moment. It's going to take an input of type text with a name new task, and we'll give it a submit button. And I'm going to throw in some script tags with the handle submit function. And in my form handler, I'm going to call this.ops.addTask. I'm going to pass it the value from my input text field. So add task is going to be passed into the tag as an attribute from our to do app tag. And once we've submitted the form, we also want to clear out the value that was in the input. So we'll just add a call to this dot new task dot value and set it to equal an empty string. So now I want to go into actions.js. So at the end of our actions.js file, we'll add a function called add task and we'll accept new task as an argument. And now that I have that function, I want to go up to the top of the file and expose that through module.exports. And we'll go back down to our function and it's going to return a new function with dispatch and get state as its arguments. And in that function, we're going to dispatch our toggle loading action. And that'll show our loading indicator in case adding a task takes a long time. And we're going to set up our XHR request, our request.open with post and our path to tasks. And we'll set our request header to content type application slash JSON. And we'll set up a function to handle the on load. And we want to send our request. And when we send a request, we want to pass it a JSON stringified value with our new task passed in as the name property. So this will create a new task. JSON server will automatically take care of the ID attribute. And in the onload function, we'll take our response text and we'll parse that, pass it into a variable called data. And we want to add a call to dispatch. And we're going to dispatch new task added with the ID and the name of the new task. And before we move on to create the new task added action creator, let's add a second call to dispatch to hide our loading indicator. So we call dispatch toggle loading with false and that'll hide our indicator. And before I forget, we're going to wrap our data and dispatch call to new task added in an if statement that checks for a successful response. So we'll check if request status is greater than 200 or less than 400, then we'll dispatch that new task added with our data. And our toggle loading false can be outside of there because we want to make sure we hide the loading indicator either way. Now let's create that new task added action creator. So we have function new task added, and it's going to accept ID and name. And we're going to return an object with a type property called task added and a data property with an object 
with an ID and a name property. So that's going to represent our new task. And now that we have this set up, let's go back to our reducer and set up a case for the task added action. So I case task added, and we're going to have that return object at assign with our existing state and an object where tasks is replaced with the existing tasks plus a call to concat to take that new task and tack it onto the end of the resulting array. So now to make sure that our task form is included in our bundle, we're going to add a require call for our task form tag. And in our to do app.tag file, we need to add the markup to show task form. And our task form needs an event handler function. So if you remember when we created task form, we're passing a call in our handle submit we're calling options.addTask. So we need to pass that in. So add task is going to equal an expression. And in that expression, we're going to pass this dot handle new task. We're going to add a handle new task function to our to do app tag. It's going to accept the task and it's going to call store.dispatch and it's going to dispatch out actions.addTask. And this keeps all of our Redux store specific functionality outside of our tags. So our container manages that. So it'll handle calls to dispatch and updating the state through subscribe. And now that we have this set up, let's go to our browser and check it out. So I'll type a value into my input, submit it. And we'll see that the loading indicator flashes for a brief second. It passes this value back and my state is updated when the response comes back from JSON server. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and be sure to keep an eye out for the next video in the series.